Welcome to the video. Uh, hi, babe. Um, we got some bad news yesterday, and uh, essentially it didn't take. So the first transfer didn't take. Um, we're bummed, but we knew that this was part of the process. Um, and so we've got an appointment here today to discuss the next moves, which we have options. So yay to options. Yay to options. And I really believe everything happens for a reason. And we'll talk. How everything good works out for me. I believe that. We'll, we'll talk uh, more about that, but we've got a doctor's appointment right now. Um, so we'll let the intro kick. So we'll kick that intro and then we'll come out of the doctor's appointment and we'll tell you kind of guys like what's happening and the plan and what the next steps are, uh, in this whole IVF process. Stay tuned. back um, we got done with our appointment and just decided to call it a day <laughs> yes mm -hmm. we said we're good we'll tune out for the day let's we'll, have a let's have a day have a um, day. so as as we said we took a blood test and it was negative which was disappointing um, One of the things that kind of we weren't totally in the know or like expecting is how much the hormones that I take basically have all the same symptoms as pregnancy. Right. So you're same exact stuff. You're nauseous. You have headaches. You have aversions to foods and smells. And then you're bloated and you have like cramping throughout. You just feel like you're pregnant. It's like all the same hormones to make your body ready for pregnancy. So it's impossible to tell the difference and you just hope which is wish. why Which is why they do a blood test. Right, which that, is why they do a blood test because there's so many variables there. So we have options. Um, luckily for us, we have options and we've got, we've got babies in the tank. So- And like we said, we are very as much as as disappointing as it is, like for anyone out there who's been through it and you understand the deal, it's disappointing, but I really truly believe that it's gonna happen. So it's just moving forward and letting go of like that disappointing, discouraged feeling. And though, even though I like, I wanna stay positive, it's not because I'm in denial. It's because I- No, truly, you have to, you have to stay yeah. positive because otherwise you just, you just turn into a sad sack of nonsense and which if, if you really look at if you really look at like what's good to create a life right um is it better to just be kind of this like sad negative entity or staying positive and and uh taking care of your body and moving in the right direction so while it does suck we have options and can we tell them what we're going to do well also one more thing like I know everybody always wants to know why, is there anything you could have done different, blah, 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 blah. And one thing that kind of had this sort of feeling in the beginning, I wasn't quite sure if it was like warranted, but a lot of people have told me a lot of different doctors and, and um, medical infertility clinics are no longer doing fresh transfers just oh, because they have yeah. so much more results, better results with a frozen embryo transfer. We decided to do the fresh transfer and it's like we told you before, you come off of your egg retrieval surgery and it's like you just took something the size of a thumb, made it the size of like a lemon or a grapefruit and then immediately five days later after you like took something and cut it open and pulled it out, you're putting a baby into your uterus. So it's like your body's kind of still a little bit in shock so I don't know if that's part of the reason why frozen embryo transfers are better because you have a full month to recover before you put in 
Not an embryo. Who knows? Who knows? But it's magic. It's basically <laughs> it's basically magic. <laughs> but what's great is now my body will have a full month to recover and not and I can like get back in the gym, feel good again, and not have so much recovery and like pressure to for my body to take something in right after a surgery. So that's one good thing. And then so we're back on it. So she's gonna continue to train and eat macros eat her macros and uh get basically as healthy as she can get between now and november and um in november we're gonna we're gonna drop two of these bad boys in which you know like we could could we could end up with twins uh we one might not take we could end up with one um one not might take and then one could split and we could end up with twins again or one could they both could take and one could split and we could end up with triplet who the, who the <laughs> hell knows um, but there is a higher, there is a more significant, um, increase in a positive result with a frozen. And then there's even more of a significant increase when you put two in. So we're going all in, like we do everything else. We're just going to go all in and, uh, and stay positive and hope for the best. And, uh, yeah, if not, we keep going. Yes, we do. We keep going and so we're no not. Deal. We're not going to get, let the discouragement overtake us. With that, so like, don't drop in your comments like, sorry, I hate to hear that, blah, blah, blah. Just be like, keep at it, guys. Thumbs up. You know what I mean? Like, don't, don't, definitely don't say sorry. <laughs> like, that's, that's not what we're going for here. So, um, yeah. You have anything else? I really, I, I really believe everything happens for a reason. You never really know why these things happen. But like our doctor even said, could have been a million reasons why it, could have been unhealthy like it just could it's have been, best that yeah. it if it wasn't meant to be that it that it didn't happen so i'm not fretting so we stay positive and keep at it always forward that's what, that's what a guy says i, I know a guy <laughs> says says that all right guys that's there's the update um good see you in a few months see yeah we'll, we'll update <laughs> well, you guys see you soon i'll see you yeah, i'll see you soon she'll see you in a few months all right Hey guys, just to wrap up, there was one thing that I uh, mentioned that we felt like, I felt like it was important information was she doesn't have to go through the whole uh, medicine process again. We're like shots in the belly for 14 days straight. So because we already have eggs in the freezer or follicles, fertilized follicles in the freezer, we're just going to use those. And... Um, the process there is a little bit easier so she just has to go back on birth control and then uh, for two weeks so it regulates her cycle so they can kind of say hey there she's gonna ovulate at this time and that's when we can drop in so like I said they've got the timing down we just need to get the uh, we just need to get the it to work so uh, but that's that's the thing so it's this time will be a lot easier on her body and then uh, once she uh, we get close to implantation. She'll start taking the progesterone again, and that's for a 10-week process um, or 10 weeks pregnant technically and then the the estrogen um, But this will be a much easier process than it was before because before you're trying to stimulate the ovaries to create all these follicles To where they can harvest them and then fertilize them and then the body's recovering. So this will be a lot less complicated if that makes sense um, Drop your questions below. If there's anything that you guys need to know or have questions about, put them below. Go hit Allison Capper up. She's answering everybody. And uh, yeah, that's it. You guys know the deal. Um, just like us, never quit, never surrender. We're always going to keep moving forward. See you guys in the next video.